we are not complete without each and every one of you. As we begin Mass, let us pause it for a moment and offer one another a gesture of welcome. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent. This Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Mary Rose Winslow. Father Don is presiding. Today's second collection is for Catholic Charities of the Arlington Diocese. There are baskets in the vestibule for today's first and second collections. If you have not already, please place your offering in them after Mass. We are grateful for your generosity. Please stand. Good evening. It's good to be here with you this evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call all sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord, in my God is the joy of my soul. For he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice. Like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels, as the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked down upon his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. My soul rejoices in my God. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. My soul rejoices in my God. He has filled the hungry with good food, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. My soul rejoices in my God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, what are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? So that we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert, make straight the way of the Lord. As, prophet, as Isaiah the prophet said, some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor to heal, to proclaim liberty, to release prisoners, to announce a year of favor, a day of vindication. These words of the prophet Isaiah are words that now are coming out of the mouth of Jesus. And I imagine that moment to be a moment of great interest to all who are listening. Not any kind of triumphal statement at all, as you might think it could be, but a, a message of entire humility that what was to be accomplished was now to be fulfilled. It was a quiet moment. It's very clever what the Word of God is doing today. First, a, test, a text of prophecy about the Messiah, who is to come and what is to happen. And then a gospel text of one who people thought might be the Messiah, but John the Baptist proclaims he is not. For us who listen today, we know that in the fourth chapter of Luke, Jesus stands up in the synagogue in Nazareth and reads exactly this first reading text from the prophet Isaiah. We hear in the Gospel of Luke, after Jesus grueling 40 days out in the desert, the same desert, by the way, where John the Baptist had been living, he returns to Galilee in the power of the Holy Spirit, and news of him spreads throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. This is the beginning of his public life. 
Nazareth is a favorite destination for many in Israel. I love going there whenever we're in the Holy Land. The Basilica of the Annunciation is built right above the cave, or they also use the word grotto, where Mary lived with her family. In the lower church, you can actually celebrate mass right next to the, to the cave, which has one side removed. So you can see the, the place where Mary lived, where the Annunciation happened. St. Joseph's Grotto is in the same neighborhood, a little north up the hill. Interesting, he and Mary's families were neighbors. Also a short walk north of Mary's house, a little to the west, is the synagogue, where most certainly the Holy Family attended teachings and prayers, perhaps from the time they returned from Egypt, up to 40 days before this account. The Gospel of Luke continues. He came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went, according to his custom, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He reads the very same reading from Isaiah we just heard proclaimed in the first reading. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them very simply, today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. It is at this moment that if he had a microphone, he could have dropped it because the proclamation of salvation just happened it, out of his own mouth. Astounding. The message is literally clear. He is the fulfillment of all the ages. We have been having an experience of what life in Jesus' day might have been like completely at the mercy of disease and political struggle, foreign threats, adverse poverty, and powerlessness. I think we've had a glimpse of hopelessness, powerlessness, frustration that we can't better our daily lives. We even have endured lockdown, understanding, our, of course, the need for caution. But just imagine what this experience would feel like in month 10. If we didn't have the promise of a cure to hang a hope on, Will more and more people just get sick and die unchecked? Will poverty and homelessness like another virus grow in most places in the world? For how long? You and I are blessed because we are not the poorest of the poor. And we have medicine. The vaccine is testimony of God's gifts of intellect and goodwill that has motivated many to find healing for all. Now, just imagine what this experience would feel like if not only without the promise of a vaccine, we were also experiencing this without Jesus. How dark would that be? I think it would be unimaginable. I think I can say that it has been our faith that has brought us this far, faith and community that clearly transcends masks and social distancing. Despite the darkness, Jesus' words in the synagogue today promise glad tidings to the poor, healing, liberty, and freedom, announcing a year of favor, a day of vindication. This is as important to our ears as it was news to the people of Jesus' time. It is truly good news. The message of this third Sunday of Advent is the joy we are able to know in the midst of this waiting. We hear John the Baptist say, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert, make straight the way of the Lord. There is one among you already now whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. He is among us already. Though we may not be able to recognize him in this moment, he is here. In faith, we know he is with us. He is suffering as much as we are. Let us watch so that we may, we may recognize the moment of his coming and know the fulfillment of his promise. Now let us stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us rejoice in anticipation of the coming of Jesus and make our hearts a more welcome home for him as we offer our prayers of petition to our Heavenly Father. For our Holy Father Francis, our Bishop Michael, and deacons and priests, who baptize with water and make straight the way of the Lord, that their ministry may be blessed and fruitful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, that a spirit of joy and renewed hope may permeate the lives of all who eagerly await the coming of Christ in glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and the unemployed, for those suffering from hunger, disease, and neglect, for all our elderly, for those who are forgotten, that we may help them through the ministries of Catholic Charities in ways that respect their dignity as God's people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grieving and sorrowing in our midst, that we may reach out to them with loving hearts and bring them comfort for healing of body and memory, an end to violence and hatred, and an abiding peace and joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing for our sick, and for peace and eternal life for all who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we know you hear our prayers and answer them according to your will. Hear us and bring all your people to the promised joy of your heavenly kingdom, through Christ our Lord. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. So I have to tell you a funny story. At the last minute when I was getting vested for Mass, I didn't think about putting on the, the rose-colored garment for this weekend. And so when I got out here and I suddenly realized I hadn't done it, it was in the middle of that penitential rite. And the experience was like being on a Zoom call where it just froze. It's like I couldn't figure out, it, it was like it erased my brain. So I, 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 that's, that was uh, that. So, but um, anyway, it's, it, the rose is, is kind of optional, but we usually try to, to, to do it. Please remember the Catholic Charities Christmas Collection is this weekend. Now more than ever, we need to help the poor and at-risk people in our communities. You can find more information about how your donations support their efforts here in the diocese. If you forgot your contribution this week, next week is fine. Please make sure it is clearly marked for the Catholic Charities Collection. Your help is greatly needed. We've added additional opportunities for confession before Christmas. We had confessions last night. We'll have confessions again on Friday, December 18, from 6.30 until 8 p.m. And we're starting a little earlier on Saturday afternoons before Christmas at 3 p.m. Make your reservations for Christmas Masses right away as we expect to exceed the 250 maximum limit per Mass. For Masses that are fully reserved by December 23rd, we will make preparations for overflowing live streaming from the church in the gym. Seating will probably be limited there as well. Masses are at 2, 4, 6, and 8 on Christmas Eve, the even numbers, and at 7, 9, 11, and 1 in Spanish on Christmas Day. There will be no 5 p.m. Mass on Christmas Day. The 4 p.m. Christmas Vigil Mass and the 9 a.m. Christmas Day Mass will be live streamed online. We kindly ask that you always reserve your place for Mass so that we can manage capacity and provide a safe environment for everyone. Also, we ask that you arrive early for Mass so the ushers can accommodate your family to your seats. Once Mass begins, we need to close the doors and let our volunteers attend Mass. After the final blessing, please follow the ushers instructions as you leave the church. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.